What is going on? My name is Psyche and welcome back to another Dead Cells video. So this time around, I'm going to be doing something a bit different. And that's posting an entire 5 BC run with a Spite Sword build, similar to the one I did with the Katana. But that was a pretty long time ago, so I thought I might do a new one. The reason why you don't see the Spite Sword in my inventory right when I begin the game is that I do all of my runs in normal mode. So basically, if I see a weapon and if I see a theme that I really like, then I would generally do it and I'll feature it on YouTube. Just starting off in the prisoner's quarters, nothing really interesting to know here. And before I go any further, I post mainly Dead Cells content on my YouTube channel, mainly guides as well as 5BC run spotlights. I have guides for players at every kind of level, so whether you are at 2, 3, 4, 5BC, there is probably something that you can learn from my guides. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It takes up no time at all and it really helps me out. If you ever change your mind later, you can always just unsubscribe. As for the video length, um, generally speaking, I, I see that a lot of Dead Cells creators post their entire runs uncut, where the entire video is around like one hour plus long. I'm not sure if people actually like that or they would rather just trim it down a little, like what I do here. So generally, I would try to have my 5 boss cell run videos to, to be about like 30 to 45 minutes long. Since what I try to do is that I try to cut out the parts where nothing really happens and just kind of stick to the highlights of my runs. So here we are just entering a challenge room that I found. Lately, I've been getting hit more in challenge rips, but so in this case, I try to go slow because I was just kind of losing my confidence, but I did manage to no hit this challenge rip, so that was very, very good. Also, times like these is where I can kind of talk about things that's not Dead Cells related and kind of just tell everyone a bit about myself. So personally, me, I'm still a college student. I'm in my third year. And the main struggle that I have right now is finding a job like many other college students. I'm in the time where finding a job is just kind of like the biggest hurdle in my life. I'm not sure like the age of what the people watching me are, but I'm assuming that most people playing this game are also like around 20 years of age, but I'm not too sure. In addition, I've seen a lot of uh, comments about how my editing is like pretty good. So by the time I started this channel, I have already had around three years of editing experience. So this this was something that I just kind of started in high school. Same goes for pho working with Photoshop. And lately I've been starting to dabble into After Effects. The scope of what you can do in it is like a lot more diverse. Like the ratio of things that you can do in After Effects versus Premiere Pro is around like 10 to 1. So Premiere Pro is what I use to edit my videos. Um, just like this run right here. Unless the video demands some kind of like custom or special animations, I don't use After Effects. And you know, the internet is a really cool place because you can just kind of learn everything on your own on the internet. So how, I, how to work with Premiere Pro as well as Photoshop, these are just things that you can just search up on YouTube. So the internet is a really, really good place. As for Photoshop, I'm not that experienced of like creating art or whatever, but I've been practicing making the thumbnails for my videos because I think the thumbnail also matters into how well the video performs in terms of like viewership or engagement. So I'm not sure if my thumbnail game is good or not, so... So when I first started uh, photoshopping, I was in high school and, and it was mainly just for memes because I would see a bunch of memes on like Facebook or Reddit and I would just kind of like learn and I was just really curious on how to do it since, you know, I wanted to create memes for myself too, so... And I remember the first meme that I ever did in high school is that it was like a masked layer of my own face in front of like the 9-11 news flash. Because I was a very edgy teen back then and I thought that was funny. But honestly, now that I think about it, it's, it's kind of stupid. But nonetheless, it was my first ever meme that I made and, you know, working with layers and it, and it feeling like you've actually done something just feels really great. Now that I think about it, that meme could have probably just taken anyone like five minutes to learn. That was kind of like the beginning point 
of my hobby in editing. So later on, I got a bit better at Photoshop even before I graduated from high school. Every single piece of work that you do in a in Photoshop or as well as Premiere Pro, it's like it's everything is a learning experience, just like Dead Cells actually. So every single time I edited something new, I also learned something new. That's how I was able to get better and better over these couple of years. Um, in here, I finally find the colorless tonic that I will be using for the remainder of this run because as soon as I saw the colorless tonic, I was like, okay, I was going to do a Swip Sword or a Spite Sword run, and it was a matter of whichever one appeared first. Since, you know, if you're running Brutality and you see a colorless tonic, you, you just have to play a Swip Sword or a Spite Sword run. So how the Spite Sword combo works is that you drink the tonic, which gives some bonus health, and then you hold up a shield to intentionally not do a parry and just take some chip damage. So you lose some of your blue health, but because the Spite Sword's critical hit condition, you deal bonus damage if you've recently taken damage yourself. So this is a really, really unique interaction that you can do in this game. This really isn't something that like you need to have a colorless tonic to be able to perform. And here at the shop, I think this is where I get the Spite Sword that I will be using for the rest of the run. There it is, since this was the one that appeared first, I won't be taking Velocity as my third mutation. After I'm done with the biome, I'm just picking up all the food that I left behind and move on to the ancient sewers. Um, in these type of videos, I like to cut out everything boring, so basically where I pick up food, where I backtrack, where, I, where the fights aren't really interesting, I just kind of cut that out and move on to the next. I tend to leave in every single fight with elites as well as curses since I think being cursed is like an experience on its own because it's kind of like living right on the edge, you know, you're you're literally one hit away from death. You know, there's something really thrilling about being cursed. But again, it's something that you just have to get used to and on 4 to 5 BC, taking curses is actually kind of mandatory since you really want to hit 30 scroll stats by the end of the fight with the hand of the king since what comes after that is a bit can get pretty tricky if you don't have 30 scrolls so back to what i said about okay that was a big hit right there unfortunately but it's a good thing that i activated the tonic and got some rally points back and i thought i was going to kind of like find food and heal back up but then after a while i'm just like okay you know i don't want to take the risk i'm just gonna use a health flask right now because one of the really really frequent mistakes i made especially playing on 2bc is being too stingy with my health flasks so if your health is low even if you're at the third biome just use a health flask especially like in 4 to 5 bc because most of the food that you find will be contaminated so it's best to not even use them at all in this case there are always food shops that you can find although unfortunately there is no food shop in the ancient sewers here i did some really fancy parries with the elite failed experiment with the automaton coming back followed by a parry of the tentacle so back to what I said about editing, um, even when I started college, I was just kind of editing just for the sake of it since, you know, I take a big interest in learning these softwares, these editing softwares, and I find editing to be really, really interesting because every single time you edit something, it's going to be completely different, even though the procedures that you go through with it is like pretty much the same, if that makes sense. And as for After Effects, like, I was really, really amazed on what you could do with that program. Like, if I saw a really fancy motion animation, or just something that's like hand-drawn in After Effects, if whoever did it could explain the process like exactly step by step, then like, I could just think to myself, like, I could have done that, you know? And After Effects is a really, really overwhelming program to use because the first time you use it you just don't know what to do they're like there's like all these tools that you don't know what they you don't know how they function and a lot of the interface and the terms that they use in after effects is like completely different than premiere pro it's like learning premiere pro from scratch the second time around so it's been a really weird experience for me so far and i've been able to make the intros for my channel 
So I believe I'll be using the new one that I made a couple days ago for this video. In the conjunctivious fight, I just take the tonic as soon as I feel like I'm going to take damage. And sometimes it works out, I mean, and then I just get the critical hit with the spite sword. Um, decided to go to the graveyard. Now, this video was recorded before Fatal Falls came out, so that's why I don't have the new biomes yet. And something I found out about the Spite Sword is that even though if you don't do a critical hit with it, it still does a lot of damage. Unfortunately, if you're hit even if, even with the tonic, you still lose the 60 kill streak. so that's still something that you have to watch out for. The thing with the Spite Sword is that you're planning to get hit very often, so... It's a very weird strategy, but nonetheless, it's very unique and it's extremely powerful. So something else about myself is that I like to watch uh, TV shows and anime from time to time. Um, I haven't been keeping too up to date with the current seasonal anime. I am waiting for Attack on Titan, the final season, to be aired so that I can watch every episode all at once because... I just don't like waiting. Though I'm pretty sure this isn't even the final, final season since I'm sure the manga is still going on. And speaking of manga, I've been reading Berserk as well as Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because I think those two are probably some of my favorite manga to read. Wow, just noticed that Slasher just in time and I was able to do a parry. Man, this Psyche is a really good player. So. Speaking of, so I've been going through Berserk and I've just finished the first arc of the Black Swordsman and it's been just incredible so far. Like I was really amazed on what it was able to do and especially with the art style. Since I know it came out pretty early, like in the 2000s, the detailed art style is like really impressive. Something that I don't like in anime or manga is fan service. So there's a reason that I probably won't ever watch an anime like Rise of the Shield Hero because I think there's just too much fan service and I'm generally not into that kind of thing. So far, I'm also watching Naruto. Recently, I've been watching it uh, just for a couple episodes every day. It's a very, very long series, so I probably won't be able to even finish it until the end of this year. I'm on Chipuden where the character Pain is just introduced, so no spoilers, please. Um, all the fights and the characters have been pretty good so far, though I, I think the some of the parts can get dragged on for a bit too long. So here we are, just getting cursed in the graveyard. I made sure to leave a bunch of enemies around so I don't have to carry the curse to the next biome. So in this door that I found, I intentionally left some enemies here so I can kill them later for the, uh, for the curse. Because if I were to carry this curse into the caverns, then generally speaking, the caverns is a much trickier place to live curses at, so I'd rather do it in the graveyard. Legendary flashing fans, which I don't need. Um, I think Tactics Melee is just kind of in a weird spot right now since all the melee supported mutations that Tactics used to have is now scaling with brutality only. I just can't really see how items like the Flashing Fans and Seda Stiletto could ever work in Tactics. Moving on to the Forgotten Sepulchre, I find the Guaranteed Curse chest here, and here I'm just sticking I'm just kind of skipping ahead because I know I do a lot of traversing and I'm just finding like items and such so I'm not actually fighting any monsters. And I'm pretty sure it's not really interesting to watch of just like running around trying to find enemies so just skipping forward. I fell into a pit there. Good thing there weren't any spikes at the bottom though I had to get to a light source pretty quickly otherwise I was gonna start to take damage. 
Now fortunately, you don't die from the darkness damage here, even if you're cursed. So that's one of like the few ways, of the few instances of damage where you don't get instantly killed by. Because I'm pretty sure you also get killed by traps, as well as holding down the lightning bolt for too long when you're cursed. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but it is like, it is something you have to watch out for. Just taking my time really slowly with these enemies. Just trying to lure them to my location so I can kind of just kill them for free with the cleaver and the fire damage. There's the curse lifted, very very good. So recently I've been getting more and more comments on my videos and seeing that I'm almost up to 100 subscribers at the point where this video is made, I mean... Just this kind of growth is it's really astounding to me and because 100 subs in like around a month is actually pretty impressive considering that I cover a pretty fringe game such as Dead Cells. So I'm not sure how well I'm doing in terms of like content quality and wise, but I'm always looking forward to improve my skills because there is still so much I can learn from. In both editing as well as commentary, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but these commentary videos, all of them are unscripted. Usually I will stutter and like make mistakes every now and then, but I try to be as precise as possible, as clear as possible with my commentaries. This isn't something that I normally do since I'm actually a pretty like introverted person in real life. And before, usually with my projects that have my commentary in them, I will always just write a script from beginning to finish. And as a result, the scripts that I used to write as well as my commentary used to come off as like really robotic. So this was something that I'm trying to fix, even with this channel. So since I'm going to be trying to improve my commentary skills, I kind of want to see like how far I can go as in terms of, you know, speaking skills. And because this just isn't, this isn't only something that's applicable to YouTube, but also in real life. Since I actually have a pretty hard time communicating with people. So I like to think of this channel as like my project to try to fix it as well as trying to improve everything else about editing. And really the first time that I tried commentating, it was just like, it was a really daunting experience because, you know, I was just alone in an empty room talking into a mic. Because, you know, talking to no one is not something that normal people do. I don't know if anyone watching actually owns and try to like maintain a YouTube channel. But if you try commentating something just by yourself in an empty room, like the experience is like very, very different. And it definitely takes some time getting used to. So coming up on this Mummy Elite, I thought I would have gotten hit by the box, but apparently not. Got hit by the spikes there a bit. But fortunately, I was able to get rally points back, so it's not really too much of a big deal. So at this point, I was just wondering, should I go to Timekeeper or Giant? But since I wanted to shake things up a little, since I usually always go to the Giant, since I think it's just generally a easier boss. So this time around, I decided to go to Timekeeper. So I know I've been getting sidetracked quite a bit here, but... So I wanted to talk a bit more about my experiences with Dead Cells in particular. So like I said in the previous video, I got introduced to this game when the IGN reviewer plagiarized this the other channel's review of Dead Cells. That's how I found out about the game, and so I just tried it out on my own, and I ended up really liking it. And this was back in 2018 when I just started college. So it was kind of like a weird time for me. Since, you know, starting college is kind of always about trying to adapt to the new life, trying to, you know, find new friends, uh, do well in your classes, but, but back then, I, I was just kind of like in my dorm and I was just like playing video games, so not sure if that was the best move on my part. So I played Dead Cells back then and I remember the first time beating 0 BC. I remember it was actually pretty hard because normally with these difficult games with like the karma death system i usually win not that late into runs so i played roguelikes such as binding of isaac nuclear throne enter the gungeon and normally in those games i didn't take too long to finish them since i don't think like they were like that that difficult to begin with but this wasn't the case with dead cells so there was a time where i was just getting really really frustrated with the game because i just couldn't beat it especially at 2 bc and like it was really frustrating because it was to a point where i 
Like, it just felt like I wasn't good enough. Like, every single time I do a run, it's due to some stupid mistake, and I always just die to a misplay or to Hand of the King, since, you know, getting to Hand of the King on 2BC was pretty hard. So because I couldn't beat Hand of the King, or 2BC in that matter, I actually quit the game a couple times in 2019 and 2020. So I know in a lot- so I know Dead Cells has been updated quite a lot over the years, and normally I would just come back to the game every time a substantial update is released. Oh, by the way, so here with the, uh, the spiked thing, I don't know what that monster is called, but basically I just laid down the cleaver and it just died on its own, because I didn't want to deal with it, especially that I have a melee weapon. So anyways, about 2 BC for Dead Cells, like, by record so far, Dead Cells is the hardest game I've ever played. And just making it to 4 to 5 BC is like a huge achievement. And uh, that Rampager just ran into the spikes. Very poor choice, but whatever. But anyways, there was just a time in the game where it just felt like I wasn't improving at all. I just wasn't getting better. And that's how I ultimately wanted to quit. But for some reason, I just kept coming back to Dead Cells, even though I was, I was just failing all the time. And I still die sometimes, uh, even at 5 BC. But Dead Cells is really a game where you will definitely lose more than you win. Normally with a lot of games, you know, people like to win, so... If they don't win a game of Dead Cells, then they just, you know, they feel really, really frustrated since... All that time you put into a run and it was just all for nothing. And here, that was a perfect Hand of the King fight, really happy with that. I didn't even get hit with the Spite Sword. The Spite Sword does a lot of damage, even if you're not- even if you don't activate the critical hit condition. And here, we just move on to the Astro Lab, which the first time I entered this biome, I died to a Librarian because their attacks, the beam attack, is very different from a lot of the other monsters. And it definitely takes some time getting used to, especially if you slow them down then the timing of it just gets really, really weird. And this build kind of struggles with Librarians because I don't have any way to deal with them before they activate the beam attack. But luckily, I was just able to dodge through them without much trouble. Something about Librarians is that you... It is a monster that definitely gets... That takes some time getting used to because this beam attack is unlike any other attack in the entire game. And if you get hit by that beam attack, like, one-third of your health is just gone. And if you're playing on tactics, I would say like two-thirds of your health is gone. Here I get hit for a bit, luckily I was able to get rally points back. Something with Librarians also is that if there are other monsters nearby, it just makes everything a whole lot harder. Because not only do you have to dodge the attacks by the Librarian with the, life, uh, the light beams, because they require some really tight dodging timing. Since you just want to dodge when you see the exclamation mark, if you dodge any time sooner or after it, then you will take damage. Luckily, there is a cheese you can do with the Librarian's attacks where you just keep running into a wall, and since it's trying to guess that your location is somewhere beyond the wall, it's not actually able to accurately pinpoint where you are. So that's a way you can cheat the Librarian's attack. In Natural Lab, you just really want to be careful because I've had runs where... Because I've had failed runs where everything was just over in a matter of seconds. Because in the, in the Astro Lab, anything can go wrong. And usually I get a bit nervous when I come here. Since, you know, it's the end of a run and you really don't want something to go wrong here. Against these elites, I just try to pop the tonic and try to hope for the best that I don't get hit. I used the Homunculus Rune to lure the Slammer because I didn't like the terrain and I was probably going to get hit if I try to go down there, so... The Homunculus Rune is also something that newer players won't use because it's just kind of like useless. But on 4 to 5 BC, they're act it's actually pretty helpful. Especially in isolating enemies because almost all enemies on 4 to 5 BC can teleport to you. So that's something that you gotta watch out for. But other than that, I'm doing amazing damage here. My scroll stat is all the way to 37, which is really high. I really didn't expect it to be this high. In a lot of my runs, my scroll stat just goes to around 30, which is considered normal. 
So again, I use the homunculus rune here because I just don't want to deal with the failed experiment and the magician, uh, the magician monster's attacks. I think those things are called like magistrates of death or something, but it's just it's just quite a mouthful, so I don't really bother with the names. Especially in this tower area, because of the purple light beams, the trap beams, you have to be careful not to get hit by them unless you have the masochist mutation. In that case, you're given much more room for error. So with these skulls, you can actually parry them, though the timing is a bit weird because it's very slow. And here I do the cheese with the two slammers where you just throw your head down and then just go down the elevator and the two just die instantly. I'm not sure if that counts as cheating, but I'm taking advantage of it, so. Buy some food as well as an additional flask and I move on forwards to fight the collector. So this is a fight that I definitely think need some getting used to, but once you get the hang of this fight, it's really not that bad. The only thing is that every single attack by the collector does a lot of damage, but luckily if you have a mutation such as the emergency triage, then generally speaking you just get invincibility frames when you when you get hit when you use a health flask, so it's basically like a free a freebie of getting out of this fight because the emergency triage mutation makes this fight a whole lot easier. So already, I already got the Collector down to one heal. I'm trying not to get damage, even though this is a Spite Sword build, because I'm trying to no-hit the Collector, and I'm trying to see if that's possible with my current setup. So we already seen the Collector do one heal, and this is probably going to be the second time. The Collector heals a total of four times, and the fourth time, he is not protected, and you knock the Panacea out of his hands. If you have a really fast build, usually he will heal two times in the first room, but in this case, but in this run, that was not the case. So that was the third heal right there, and this is probably going to be the last room that I'll be in before I finish the fight. So here I got really greedy with my attacks, that's how I got hit. I can't really say anything but it being my fault because I thought I could get some attacks in before the meteor struck, but apparently not. So here I just get the potion, do some parries with the meteors and the collector's down. So really really fun build I had in this run. The spice sword is definitely something that I recommend players trying out for themselves because the synergy that it has is really really unique in this game so that's the run hopefully you have enjoyed it i had a lot of fun with the run and had a lot of fun putting this video together so if you want to see more content like this you know what to do i will be posting more content with the new update with the new fatal false dlc later sometime so i'm not sure when this video will be released but by then fatal falls would have came out and i probably have some new content for the channel so until then thanks for watching